good afternoon everyone uh, welcome to the eighth episode of season 2 of coffee with ashish and today we have got a very special guest with us mr uvas ibahat who is the head of markets for switzerland tourism and all of us uh, who are joined today on this session as ashish was saying few minutes earlier all envious of the destination and it's a very it used to be a very aspirational destination now even uh, middle class and tier 2 tier 3 cities in india and elsewhere in the world are also looking towards switzerland around the year and even for the switzerland uh, country the, the tourism is a big part of their overall gdp and i was reading somewhere that close to 60 billion uh, swiss francs is 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 the contribution and more than 200000 full time job equivalents in the entire country representing 4.4% of the export income is contributed by travel and tourism for the country so it's definitely on top of the mind for even policy makers and the bureaucrats in switzerland and i was also reading few statistics uh, from the federal statistics office of switzerland that close to 400000 indian tourists have visited uh, this is all pre covid numbers now of course numbers Uh, tend to go high wire but these were the number of indian tourists who have visited switzerland in the last few years and annually close to a million uh, overnight stays have been happening and in fact i think 1 million was the number in 2020 which was pegged but probably that's that's something which we'll achieve in in couple of years right but overall there has been a significant rise in uh, tourism to switzerland by india and other countries as well especially within india it used to be a destination as you can see the pictures behind mr uh, ibahat's uh, screen that is used to be a popular place for hnis and celebrities but now even tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, people from india are going to switzerland a lot of young people and adventurous travelers are going to switzerland for adventure and experimental experiential tourism and the idea is that the destination is being now promoted Uh, not only for certain seasons but like a 365 day all the year round holiday destination for the indian market and there have been lot of interesting infrastructural developments which have been happening in the switzerland which i'm sure uh, we'll get to know more about during this conversation but i was reading about the snow park on mount itlis igloo village which is now being opened up for tourists and these kind of new uh, infrastructural developments will make switzerland Uh, a really 365 day destination and more and more indians would be prompted towards visiting the country and our guest today uh, mr ruas ibahat who is the head of markets switzerland tourism is is here to talk about and share his wisdom on how he sees the market evolving and he's got a very illustrious career and he has really risen uh, from the ranks and it's it's a very admirable journey which he has taken up professionally he started his career Uh, at Switzerland Tourism in back in 1989 he looks pretty young but he's got more than 35 years of experience he started off as a district manager in in Düsseldorf in Germany and then for next 5 6 years he was in charge of Switzerland Tourism Amsterdam and he was then elected as director of uh, Switzerland Tourism in London taking up responsibility for the UK and and Ireland uh, till late 90s and then in the early 2000s he was named the VP marketing based in the switzerland tourism head office in zurich and then uh, over the next decade he has taken up various roles as director of switzerland tourism north america in the ny office la and toronto and uh, for the most important source markets of the swiss tourism industry he has been the key person and then of course he moved back into the hq taking up deputy ceo role for switzerland tourism for the new developing markets and uh, you know now obviously he is he is looking at overall as the head of market so we are really privileged and honored to have you with us today uh, mr ibahat uh, and we really welcome you on on coffee with ashish and i'm going to request ashish to to have a conversation with you while i sit back and enjoy my coffee thank you oh so i'm glad you're enjoying your coffee and and i think we've we've been speaking about the storybook charm with suzanne gets it and least we should forget that we we've, we've sort of been born around uh, some many 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 uh, key products of suzanne watches being one of them chocolates being another uh, we can't forget that and of late of course for many years roger federer who remains my 
all time favorite sports person not to forget so welcome um, us on the show and while we are talking about these difficult times so how's the tourism industry in Switzerland dealing with it uh, currently as as you know we have this uh, worldwide pandemic and uh, obviously we are suffering a lot uh, when the pandemic hit Europe uh, in the first wave in March uh, and there was a lockdown in Switzerland and so we have been hoping that this first wave would disappear after 10 or 12 weeks and that then perhaps the summer could be uh, still safe but as we all know the the hopes didn't fulfill and and so we entered uh, a second wave now in Europe and uh, we are struggling especially the cities because obviously as you know there is business travel the cities rely much more on on visitors from abroad because we had a lot of swiss the domestic travel once the lockdown was over in june 2020 the swiss started to really travel the country because uh, they had no other choice than staying in switzerland which is not such a hard uh, not such a hard thing to do to stay in this beautiful country, but they they went uh, obviously mostly to the mountains, to the scenic alpine resorts. So they didn't go or didn't stay in, in our cities. So the cities, they really do suffer. They are probably on roughly 20, 25% of the business compared to last year. And we have been losing overall in our country until the end of September more than 12.5 million overnights uh, compared to last year. 12.5 million overnights. That's uh, that's a huge amount of overnights. That's that's combined the U.S., combined China, combined India, combined Germany, combined France uh, for for a good year. So it's really a a very very tough year for our industry uh, and it's still not very clear you know how the the situation will evolve uh, currently the countries around us the european markets they are in a slowdown or, or even sometimes in a lockdown switzerland is, is, is very liberal in that in that uh, in, in that circumstances we are basically uh, allowed to, to to roam around, uh, we are there is a, a recommendation to stay home uh, and do home office, but you can also go to the office. The restaurants are still open in most of the parts of Switzerland. Uh, you can go up to the mountains. The public transportation is, is running. So, in 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 some respect, uh, we're also fortunate to have this this freedom, and we are still very confident at the end of the day and that's probably part also of our industry to to, re, to remain optimistic and to to look at the light at the end of the ton, tunnel uh, there will be there will be better times coming and, and and we have such a a wonderful product and and the beauty of the country has not changed at all so and we've seen that also in this summer you know we had this uh, roughly three months open borders with our neighboring countries with france with germany with with holland belgium italy and the moment that the borders were opening we got more than 80 percent of the business back compared to the same period last year so that makes us confident that once travel will be possible again the borders will open up again that we might see the the visitors again and and Obviously, hopefully, also the Indian visitors again. Right. So, so what are you seeing as main challenges? And obviously, the challenges throw in some opportunity with it as well. So, how would you put them across? You know, the challenges. Basically, there are five challenges that 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 I see. Uh, one is to to gain the trust of people. You know, the, the, how do we how do we how do we make sure that people trust us? uh in, in in such a period and and that's definitely a challenge that that we have to overcome by having you know good good health care that we have rules for distancing that our our uh health uh is is is, is or the people that come to switzerland 
feel safe also in terms of the clean and safe situation that we have. We have a, a challenge, as I mentioned, with business travel. Uh, we have a challenge with the cities. Uh, we have obviously also a challenge with some uh, seasonal, seasonality. So uh, if in November, obviously, like now, normally tourism is low anyway, and how can we make then the Swiss that like to travel only when it's really nice weather, uh, how can we make them, them travel again? So there, there are a few challenges. Uh, and I think that probably the biggest challenge is this missing, missing planning security. Uh, there's so much rumors going around. There is so much uh, restrictions that are done by individual countries or by individual governments. And it changes more or less sometimes by the day that you know you are on a sudden there is a quarantine there and there is a, a restriction there. And, and, and you have to always be on your toes to, 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 to think about, okay, now we have an opportunity because it seems to be that the traveling is possible between those two regions or two countries. And then perhaps a few days later, it's, uh, it's changing again. And then the, the, the last challenge that I, I fear actually the most is the economic, uh, the economic challenge, you know, the effects with unemployment, with people earning less, uh, the recession that might come, the, the currencies that lose value. Uh, that I see as a, as a, as a possible long-term effect of the whole thing you know even if we might have a vaccine even if uh, there is this this uh, distancing rules if the economies uh, of those of those countries are kind of making spending money for a vacation uh, difficult then it will be very very uh, tough but we we have a lot of, of of opportunities that we see as well so we we believe that we have to be confident. Uh, we have to live probably with a new normal. There will be, most probably, there will be smaller groups traveling. There will be uh, people travel like Indians like to travel with, with their families. So that those are people you know, you trust, you know that, that, that you can feel safe traveling with them. And because we are a, a country that is, that is excellent for individual travelers or for small groups because the Swiss population does speak English. Uh, it's a, extremely easy to get around. Everything is, 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 is signposted. You actually cannot get lost in our country. You know, everything is, is perfectly signposted. And, and, and so there is a, a, an opportunity also for smaller meetings if the, the business travel is not coming back so fast. We have smaller meeting spaces, you know, with, with, with large windows overlooking the landscape. And, and so our relatively small infrastructure is, is, is quite, quite geared up to, to have smaller, smaller groups or individual travelers. And we're also hoping that, that there might be uh, some testing instead of quarantine, you know, that you do a a quick test before you depart and do a, a test when you arrive and when you're negative you're allowed to go on a plane when you're negative you're allowed to enter the country and when you go back the same thing so that we have this kind of covid free perhaps zones so we're really trying to work you know with airlines with countries with governments to find ways to to bridge this 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 difficult period and, and, you know, there's what is very interesting, I've noticed over the last seven, eight years that all the countries, and like I'm talking to you here, our problems are more or less built around the same theme. It is really as if the world has leveled. And, you know, you, we, we are talking the same language. And, you know, we've been in the Indian government and Indian travel fraternity has been looking a lot of inwards to say, how do we push the domestic part of the travel first, right? So it's really built around two. How do we get the consumer confidence coin. And, and to get consumer confidence, obviously you have to be showing yourself to be safe in various destinations, resorts, wherever you go, be it the protocols of the government itself within the states. And second, of course, what you mentioned, the economic, um, the confidence also comes from the uh, having economic confidence. 
And the second, of course, has been how do we actually kickstart the consumer demand? Uh, and and kickstarting demand has its own challenges, and in, in as much that suddenly uh, you know, the, 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 is it you between what is required and what is not required, essential versus non-essential, has become so much prevalent. So when you spend money, support the first thing you ask yourself: Is it essential for me to do that? So you know, many times, especially in the holiday business, you might even start asking yourself: Is it essential for me to? do it or on the on the corporate travel front etc but then let's come back again to to the good times which i'm sure that will await us in the future so how do you see the future of the indian market i'm again i'm very very positive because i i see india as as, as really resilient uh, i mean your country went through a lot of crisis a lot of people have to fight uh, also to you know, to have a job, to 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 make to make uh, a living, and I I've seen so many hope, uh, so much hope in 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 India, so much desire uh, to to succeed, and so much desire also to travel abroad and to 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 explore the world. That's 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 why I I, I strongly believe that travel out of India which has seen a huge surge, by the way, over the last decade. I mean, the, the, the middle class that was able to afford to go abroad has been growing uh, tremendously in, in your country. Mm -hmm. And we have been one of the, the beneficiaries of, 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 that, of that growth uh, up to 2019. And uh, the 400,000 Indians that, that uh, were mentioned those are only the Indians that uh, are, are staying in hotels in Switzerland. So you can double the number because more and more Indians also stay in vacation homes in, in our country. So that leads me actually to, to, to uh, again, this optimism because there is a, a deep love for our country in India. And, and we see, as I mentioned before, that, that a lot of Indians travel with their family and, and, and with their loved ones or with a group of friends. And, and the vacation rental is a perfect place to, to, to spend the vacation. Uh, I, I do see India definitely as, as, as a challenge also, you know, to with such a large population to, to get a, a pandemic under control. But there I trust, again, I trust the democracy of India and I trust also uh, the way you are as a country dealing with with this large population i admire that i mean i i see i see the cows sometimes in switzerland with only 8 million inhabitants and i just cannot imagine you know how how your government has to deal with with this huge amount of 1.3 billion or uh, inhabitants in india so i admire your, your your country extremely but what also was mentioned in the beginning, we see that more and more Indians discover Switzerland in different seasons. So we had a, a relatively nice growth in, in, in the winter time, in the, in, in the autumn. I, I'm sure if, if the situation would have been normal, that we have, would have seen a lot of Indians now during Diwali coming to Switzerland. We have seen over the last three, four, five years, every October, November, more, more Indians coming. And we also see that, as was also mentioned at the beginning, that more and more Indians are they're getting more adventurous. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in the in the in the let's say in the in the Yash Chopra time of, of Bollywood, most of the visitors they came to Switzerland, they admired the green meadows and the chalets and the cows, and they loved the cows because they have beautiful, most beautiful cows in Switzerland. You, I mean, that's a reason by itself to come and look at our beautiful cows. Uh, but, but nowadays, the, the younger, more urban travelers from India, they enjoy also, you know, some, some really adventurous activities. They, they go parapenting or they go uh, river rafting, they go dancing in the evening. They, they like the, the, the atmosphere also of, of our cities. And, and with this match of product that, that really does match the desire of Indian people, and the belief that India will bounce back and will travel again abroad, I see actually a, a, a very, very positive future uh, for, the, um, for, 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 the, for the next 
few years between India and, and Switzerland. And I hope that more and more Indians also will discover skiing because that's a, a pastime that is not yet so popular with, with, with Indian travelers, but we do offer a, a first ski experience. So if someone comes to Switzerland from India and would like to try on some boots and skis and helmet and goggles and gloves and get a nice good looking ski instructor showing how to glide on snow, then they can do that. We, we offer a, this one-stop shop where you get all the gear, including the ski instructor, and you can try to glide for two, three hours. And we call that first ski experience. And if it's only, and, and, and Indians are very famous for that. And if it's only to take a selfie and right. send it back home and to brag about how, how you did ski right. in the house. And, and, and so hopefully with products like that, we will make more Indians uh, willing and wishing to come to our country. See, now that I'm talking to you and you're mentioning about small family groups or small friends group, I get the feeling because you see what's happening in India, this work from home, work away from home um, is, is, is a reality, right? Whether we like it or not. We have ourselves seen co-working spaces in smaller cities rising and, and demand going up, which is really saying that if you worked in Mumbai or Delhi or, or Gurgaon, you, you maybe a large amount of population of these companies have beginning to work from smaller cities where they actually live. So there's little need for them to come to Gurgaon and rent a uh, apartment for themselves and so on. So companies are, are taking a co-working space in smaller towns or people are working from home. So the sense I get here and the point I'm making is that you might have friends in uh, working within the same company or fraternity, et cetera, also grouping up because if I'm working out of Bhuvneshwar in, in East and Karthik here is in Delhi and we've worked all our lives in the same company, we'd say, hey, come on, you join from there and I'll join from here. Let's go together because we otherwise wouldn't have a chance uh, to interact with each other on a normal. So that's something I see might just touch our lives. The second thing I, I touch, you're talking about the season, uh, because we have November. Uh, I also get a feeling with scattered work timings, with people scattering their work. Uh, I think you might have a longer stretch in that holiday zone to say, okay, I'll take it in November and you take it in October. So there'll be a lot of this between companies which may be happening for, that's a thought. And certainly so, uh, because as you know, a large amount of group travel, escorted group travel, um, even incentive groups, uh, a lot of them went to Switzerland. I, I see a lot of that adjustment, if I may use the word, may be mm -hmm. happening as we go forward in the Indian market. Just I, think, I think so as well. I mean, the groups, the incentive groups, they still will happen because the, the boss will, will still want to reward his, his, his best performing staff. But the groups might be smaller. Well, there might be more, more restrictions uh, in traveling, but they will also come back. Right. And, and what you said, I, I see that as well now. There is more and more a development in terms of so-called workations. Yeah. You know, so you go somewhere because your office has not to be at home or in a, let's say in a regular office. Your office could also right. be in a place where you enjoy Absolutely. a vacation. Right. And I'm sure it, it happens to you, it happens to me when I'm taking a day off, I take my laptop with me and I'm working yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, so actually this workation where you, where you enjoy a nice environment, perhaps a beautiful view, perhaps you in the evening you go with your, your spouse or your partner uh, for a nice dinner, but you still have a work environment where you can work your five, six, seven hours a, a day. I think that's something that will also, will also uh, happening. And what we have been launching in Switzerland more for the domestic market, but perhaps also would it would be an opportunity also for, for uh, visitors from abroad, is a so-called bed and bureau uh, initiatives yes. where you actually work from a hotel room. Because, you know, if you're at home and you have, let's say, two dogs and three kids uh, and, you sh and you have just perhaps one room to share and, and your partner has also to work from home, you might actually stand on each other's feet. So why not go into a nice hotel room where you have, you know, your quiet uh, and peace, and then you can work from there. 
So this bed and bureau is, is an initiative that we're doing now with 18 hotels around Switzerland, and it's, it's taken up quite, quite positively. So I, I see that your spouse would not be telling you, oh, so you're not taking your telephone and your laptop on the holiday because you say I'm working. She, she does tell me, but I'm, I'm, I'm still the stronger one. So I, I put it in my backpack. <laughs> then I work, I work at, at six o'clock, six to eight in the morning, and then perhaps in the, in the evening. So I still can spend time with her, but I'm, I'm a horrible, I, you know, I'm old, you cannot change me anymore. I'm, I'm okay. one of those old elephants that you can, you can push me and nudge me, but I still are. Right, right. So, so, so coming back to the Swiss tourism, infrastructure in India, how large is your team here and uh, how the Indian operations coping up, your entire uh, distribution machinery, everything? We have a, a wonderful team in, in, in uh, India, uh, in our Mumbai office. Uh, we are five people strong. We are, we are very dedicated people. We have a specialist, you know, in the whole meeting and incentive department. We have very long-standing uh, uh, co-workers, we have uh, people working for uh, the Swiss travel system uh, because a lot of Indians, they love our trains and our panoramic scenic uh, routes going through Switzerland. Uh, we have really, really a, a great team there uh, that is very busy, even though they work from home, they, they do uh, all splattered around working from home. They are working very hard and very dedicated. We are extremely proud to have them because they are constantly answering tons of questions from agents, you know, from uh, when does the visa section uh, opening up again? Uh, when I can travel, where should I go? I have a client asking for this. I have a client asking for that. That's uh, one of, the, of, of, of a very important uh, piece of work. The most important work they do is keeping up the contact with the network, you know, keeping contact with agents, with, with media, with, with the whole uh, network uh, that we have in India. Also to, to show that we are here with you going through the same kind of challenges and we believe together with you that there will be better times. And, there is this old saying, I, I very much believe if you stick with, with someone in bad times, they will stick with you in good times. And sure. if you want to show our loyalty also towards the Indian market, the Indian market has been extremely good to us, has been extremely good to Switzerland. And it would be, it would just be a, a horrendous fault or mistake if we would, if we would scale down or close the office in India, because we want to give back. We want to be with, 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 with you people because we believe there is, there's a bright future. And uh, I, I really use that opportunity. I know that, that our staff uh, is definitely also watching. Uh, we are extremely proud of the work they're doing. So uh, happy to have them on board. No, it's great to have your confidence behind them. And I think where they will reach, be reaching out more to you in the head office would be the digital contents and digitalization because India, although many countries have realized it, but I, I would say India has moved very strongly behind the internet penetration, digitalization. The prime minister in every address to the nation and every address to any commercial forum uh, is, is emphasizing, even this morning, he had a, a webinar with few industrialists, et cetera. And it says in each of our own ministries, uh, we are making sure a certain percentage of our work is done by technology and digitalization. So th therefore, uh, contents, be it, uh, be it on website, be it on applications, be it on digital, will be requiring more and more support from your end, I guess, uh, uh, be it videos, be it 360 degrees, virtual realities, all that's happening here. Uh, yeah, so I think, I, think. I, have to, I have to say, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I, I repeat myself, but I'm extremely proud of our team because they looked at that very, very early. Mm -hmm. uh, Misha, Ritu, uh, Ash, uh, uh, they are all actually using digital, digital uh, tools to, to be present. And we have been uh, campaigns, we have been doing uh, digital campaigns very, very successfully. Uh, also in, in your country and also using some cutting edge technology. Right. 
the, the, especially the penetration of mobile of mobile phones in India is is is, is amazing. And so you have to you have to work then obviously much more with with those tools that people are watching videos or content on mobile phones. Perhaps in, in Europe it's it's still more perhaps desktop computers or or or, or laptops or or tablets. But in India it's it's a lot of, of mobile phones and our team was really able to get that uh, tool uh, and 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 use content from Switzerland to send over those channels to the communities. Right, right. You did mention skiing product, of course, but do you see any other product developments which may be of interest worth mentioning to the Indian market? I, I see I see that more and more we see that that also the, the activity as such is is becoming uh, important. So being outside and, and, and move a bit and, and, and discover uh, stuff just perhaps with your own uh, energy by, by going someplace. We also see that uh, the, the scenic trains, even though they are without hesitation, the most one of the most popular reasons to come and the mountains to touch snow, we also see more and more independence in, in travel. And we see also people uh, renting a car and, and, and doing part of a grand tour of Switzerland, which is our uh, famous uh, Alpine road trip uh, in our country. So that, that definitely is something that's, that's going to happen. But what we also would like to, you know, to offer to, to travelers is uh, as example that you stay in a city and you make excursions and you go up a mountain, perhaps you go on a, on a river cruise uh, for, for, for a few hours, perhaps you go on a mountain. So we want to make Switzerland more accessible uh, also to, to travelers right. that they can make also a decision by looking what is, what is available in my vicinity uh, and, and what could I do half a day or a full day. And this is also a product that we believe that India will be very interested in. And then obviously the whole wedding industry yeah. is yeah. Yeah. something that we are working very hard. Uh, so uh, we have our, our mice specialist is now also dealing with, with destination weddings. Right. And uh, an Indian wedding is something very, very special. And if you are fortunate enough to have an Indian wedding uh, in your destination, this is a four days festivities, a lot of guests, uh, elephants in St. Moritz uh, and stuff like that and, and flowers all, all around. And uh, so that's also some, something that we believe is, is Switzerland is a perfect destination. Because you might have, you know, you might have friends from India living in in London or in 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 another in another country, and then meeting up in the center in Switzerland Very central it makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does indeed. And um, well, looking ahead, looking into the future, when do you see the pre-COVID volumes coming back to? Uh, you know, it's it's it's. Actually, I know it's it's a. It's a Soothsayer and Crystal Bowl and Nostradamus all rolled into one. Yes, I didn't cut up a dove or or or, or a fish to look at. Yeah, <laughs> because no, it's we we are we are trying to to look into forecasts and and forecasts uh, from Oxford Economics and there is a, a Swiss company doing some forecasts. We're looking at IATA data. We're looking at a lot of data and we do that on a monthly basis. But we also see that every month it changes relatively dramatically because you know you cannot predict what happens in, in two, three, three weeks. But we're still confident that we get about 80% of the business back in 2022. Um, some markets perhaps only in, in 2023, but we will have 80% of the of the business back of most of the of actually of most of the countries in 2023. Uh, and that's the latest forecast. Uh, it, I will do another one at the end of November, so it might change again. But, and we, see, we, we, we do believe that it will come back and we will have 100% uh, back looking at my forecast uh, in 2024. Uh, uh, but again, 
we should talk again in 2024 and see if I was right or not. We, we, we'll probably have another coffee in that stage. But <laughs> co coming back, uh, I learned that you have love for Indian food and you like things Indian. So what is personally you like about India? I, as I said, I, I'm, I'm just in love with India. I, I love, I love the people. I, the moment I land in, in, in Delhi or in Mumbai and, and, and you get out of the plane, you see all those smiling faces and you see a lot of people, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just love the, the people. And then the, the driver that drives you to, to the hotel, uh, is, is, is such a, a nice, friendly person. And if I tell them not to, not to race and to keep it no. quiet, quiet and stuff and not, not, not too fast. And, and they, they love that they, they chit chat. And then I love, as, as you mentioned, the food because I'm a vegetarian uh, for decades already. And India is paradise. I mean, this is really paradise. I, I, you know, I, I'm fortunate that I stay in a nice hotel and they have this hat, obviously, when I was there last time, they had this beautiful buffet with all those pots, with all those vegetarian food that, you know, you start with one pot and then you try the next one and the next one. I gain so much weight when I'm in India because, because it's, it's, it's just fantastic food. And what I also like about India is the the belief in opportunities and the belief in, 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 in a better future and, and the willingness of people to, to try and to try hard and to, to, to get, to, get uh, to, a, to a brighter future. And sometimes I miss that, you know, in, in our country where people are relatively spoiled, uh, life is, life is, is comfort, comfortable, it's, 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 it's a good life. And, and I see how much how much effort young Indians put into education and into into learning and 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 I see I see this as a, as a great asset uh, in your country that people are really really trying hard and are willing to learn and to as you mentioned before new technologies uh, some of the some of the most famous engineers worldwide are Indians because they, they, they have this drive to learn and to, 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 to improve stuff. I like that. I really do like that. I, I like people that, that see the, that don't stand still, that, that want to that wanna go. And what I also, I mean, India is, is you have, I mean, I'm, I'm bragging about Switzerland being a beautiful country, but I mean, you have a beautiful country. It's just a very large country. But it is beautiful. I mean, you have snowy mountains. You have the most gorgeous beaches. You have you have different climate zones in in one country. You have we're always bragging. We have four national languages. I mean, you have more than twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> so so it is such a fascinating country with which is a world in a country actually, and and that that fas fascinates me. It's a it's a. I'm, I'm honestly, and I'm not saying that because I'm chit-chatting with you. I'm really deeply in love with, with India. And I cannot wait to, to come and visit your country again. Right. Well, Urs Eberhardt, it's been a been pleasure having you here today on Coffee with Ashish. And hopefully, uh, I will catch up on your predictions in 2024, if not earlier in India, actually have a coffee with you. And I'll ask Karthik if he has some concluding remarks uh, before we end the show. Thank you once again. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It was lovely uh, hearing you both. And I have got one personal question to, to ask you. So like what Bollywood probably did for India, Swiss tourism corridor in, in, in the 90s and early 2000s, what kind of other sunshine sectors do you see? Like, it, like sports, for example, we have seen IPL becoming a big event, but that's moving into Dubai this year. Do you see some of these sporting events or even startups? Uh, there are a lot of countries who are welcoming startups to come over and set up in, in their country and providing them host of benefits. Do you see any such uh, sunshine sectors between India, Swiss, world? There are a, a few uh, very, very uh, large Indian investors actually already coming to Switzerland and there are, are actually already based in Switzerland. And a lot of uh, development for a world on a worldwide scale is done in Switzerland by Indian uh, entrepreneurs. So there is some some 
on an economic uh, level, there is there is some exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I've just uh, also read that there was a, an Indian investor now actually that bought uh, a hotel in Switzerland. You see that also more and more that also even in the in the hospitality industry, we have uh, now an, ex an exchange basically that Indian uh, investors and entrepreneurs are actually uh, actually coming into our hospitality industry. And uh, there is also quite a large, large uh, part in terms of education uh, that, that is happening between India and Switzerland. There's a lot of Indian students in Switzerland and there are also some Swiss schools uh, doing, uh, doing their, their, their kind of, uh, how do you say that, uh, their office, they have their offices abroad in India as well to, 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 to share the knowledge as well between, uh, the, let's say, the Swiss education system and, and the Indian education system. So there is, there is exchange and, and opportunity on, on various levels, not just on the Bollywood level. Right. Uh, so on this note, we are at the end of today's session. Thank you so much, Mr. Ibahar, for joining us today. And uh, thank you, Ashish, as always. And thank you, all of you who have joined us for today's session. And uh, we're going to catch up with you next weekend with another uh, industry leader on the show. So uh, thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening ahead. Thanks again, Mr. Ipa. Thank you very much. Thank you for, thank you for coming.